In 2017, Labour's Tāmati Coffee flipped the Waiariki electorate, unseating Māori Party co-leader Te Uriro Flavel. This election, the Māori Party's Rawiri Waititi will be hoping to return the favour. But could Vision New Zealand leader Hannah Tāmaki have Lady Luck on her side? He tau patu patu nui kei te haere, kei te mātaki taki koutou i a te hui pōti. Rua te kou, rua te kou. Karahui hui mai. I'm Mihi Ngārangi Forbes and tonight the leading candidates in Waiariki tell us how they'll serve your whānau if they're elected to Parliament. Now, so far this year, more than 36,000 Māori have registered to vote in Waiariki and in 2017, 68.6% of registered voters showed up to the polls, the third highest turnout in the Māori electorates. So let's meet the candidates vying for your vote. They are Labour's Tāmati Coffee. Vision New Zealand's Hannah Tamaki and the Māori Party's Rawari Waititi. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora, kia ora. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora tata. I'm going to start by asking each of you for your opening statements. Tāmati, kei a koutou te wā. Ko wai rā te tāngata nei, ko wai ko tūpea, ko rongo pea, aku matāra tā hia te ki, tā hia te wānanga, hea roma ki te hea roma fiti, ko mā fiti kura, ko mā fiti ora. Ko te wehi ki te whare, he whare mā tahi e hui te rangi ora, e tū ake nei ki runga. Uhi, wero, haramai te toki, haumi e hui e tāe ki e. Nau mai, te rohi o te waiariki e mātaki taki mai, ngā kuia, ngā koraua, ngā rangatira mō āpōpō, tēnei te mihi nui kia koutou, tēnei te te hio ngā kai hoi o te arawa wake e mihi atu nei kia koutou, te arawa whānui mā tātua waka taki timu waka e mātaki taki mai ana. Nau mai ki te muro o te ahi, nau mai ki te tohe tohe, tau tohe tohe nei, it's going to be a good night. I'm here to convince you that the faith that you put in me in 20 2017 to lead the Waiariki is the same decision uh, that will lead you to the voting booths, to give two ticks again uh, to the Labour Party, but also for me to be your representative uh, for the Kahui Māori within the Labour Party to continue the good work that we've done under the leadership of Jacinda Ardern, our Right Honourable Prime Minister and Leader of the New Zealand Labour Party. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou, mārai kura i hēna. Kia ora, I'm Hannah Tamaki, uh, leader of Vision New Zealand. Um, I'm a mum, a grandmother and a great-grandmother. I've got experience and I've got whānau. I'm very passionate about all people and after working with people uh, every day for the last 42 years and in the, the last 30 years in Waiariki, I'm determined to make a difference. Um, as a woman, as a mana wahene, and I'm, I, I just say to our people, all people, it's time for a mana wahene to take the Wairiki seat, to work alongside the people, to be passionate and purposeful and know that they have the potential, they have the possibilities before us. Yes, we're going to have to have a reset. A whole lot of things are going to have to change. But working together um, can build a stronger community, stronger throughout Wairiki, making a difference for everyday people. I pray and hope that you would put your trust in me and give me the opportunity to lead uh, very powerfully and strongly and passionately for Waiariki and the surrounding districts that we could be a different example to the rest of New Zealand. Take a big chance, take a step of faith, put your hope in your vote, vote Vision New Zealand. Ka pai, kei a koe ehoa. Ka tēnā tātou katoa, ka tiki a koe ehoa, te haka atu tāni hoa neho. Pongara, i pongara, i katata ki mai te whare o ngā ture kawiria. Te Māori kawiria, wau nei o nga reiti, wau nei o nga tāke āha, uhu te tai a te ue ue. He katia ke hika mā te nga tātou, te nga tātou i tēnei pō, ha te nga tātou whakarau i ka mai, ko whakawhai ti mai, koutou wa koutou wā kāinga, tēnei rā te mihi aroha ki a koutou. Ha katiake ki te tokorua nei, ha ko haramai nei, ha ki te kōro e ngā kōro, ngā take nui, kei mui a tātou mo te waiariki, hei te mi atu anu ki a kōrua, kia koe e mihi tēnā koe. Waiariki, it is time to return a Māori voice back into the waiariki seat to represent our interests. We have an opportunity to return a Māori voice that is unapologetic, that will not be silenced, that will not be subjugated, that will not be assimilated. This is your true Māori voice that will represent the interests of our people here in the Waiariki, but ensure a brighter and better future for our Tamariki Mokobuna heading into the future. So we're here at the moment, we have our Labour voice, but we deserve a Māori voice. 
for Rauri Waititi for Wairiki and return the Māori Party to Parliament to protect the Māori, true Māori and unique Indigenous voice of this country. Ehikama, kia ora tata. Ka mai te wehe koutou kato. Now let's take a look at what the people of Wairiki believe the big taki are in this election. Kia ta huri aki tato. There's so much to do here. We have adventure tourism, we've got theme parks. Bacon and eggs, I reckon. It's choice. Ah, it's a good place. Kia ora koutou katoa, I'm Cleo Fraser. Welcome to Te Arawa Territory. My iwi, Te Arawa, is at the heart of the Wairiki Electric, which goes as far as the East Cape, just past Oportiki, where I grew up. We're here in Rotorua, which was the nation's tourism capital, but is now feeling the pressure of a global pandemic. Let's find out what the big issues are here in Wairiki. Poverty is a big thing here. Drugs. That's the big issue here in Rotorua. Health is another issue in Rotorua. I see people crying out for help. Sort of to a family. You know, they can't afford to get medical help from doctors and all that. Money, being able to keep your job. Yeah, my daughter used to work for um, Hell's Gate and she's lost, lost her job. A lot of businesses are shutting down. Like, it's hard to get jobs here. Like, I've been applying for jobs for like a year now and no luck. School-wise, I reckon they should be um, giving the people that don't have internet in their homes some internet so that they can do their work. There's not enough houses for everybody. There's a lot of homeless. I mean, our hotels are full of people. Mm. They've got no homes. Oh, mainly the homeless. And I've just come out of um, two years of emergency housing. Um, we just came here at the time where there was no homes. We got put into a motel and they bounced us around from agency to agency for two years. Mm. Not one of them helped us. I found my own house, but I have to go to Mutapada. Some of our the landlords around here are pretty shocking, but they're getting away with charging tenants a big amount of money for places that don't have hot water, mould in the place. It's not fair on families with kids. My husband's working coming in. Like I said, I've got an autistic son too, so... So you had to give up your job because you could only find a house in Mutapada? Mm -hmm. Worst people off than myself. I try not to, you know, get too down on myself about it. We're pretty blessed now that we have somewhere. Yeah. But I watch families come in whole and I watch them leave broken. Just like really like do something. Like even just showing up. Mm. I got myself out of there and nobody helped us. The people have spoken. There's two big issues here. Jobs, especially our rangatahi, are finding it really hard to find work. And housing, Fano want more permanent housing. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Well, not a great testimonial for this government. What are you going to do about it, Tamati? Yeah. Mihi, I wish like heck that we didn't inherit the housing crisis that we did. It meant that we wouldn't have had a waiting list uh, that is so long uh, that it's obviously taken us this long to try and deal with. Uh, I wish that the last government didn't sell off state houses so that we were in a better position to be able to look after those people that were talking to us and spilling their hearts out on the video there. Uh, what have we done uh, in the short time that we've been here? We set an ambitious target. It was too ambitious, it turns out. We had to reset that target. Uh, what else have we done? Uh, we've looked at our state housing stock. Uh, we've built state houses in parts of Rotorua especially uh, that haven't seen state houses for a very long time. Uh, I took a drive around Ford Block recently and checked out some of the new places that are, are ready to have their ribbons cut and ready to have whānau move into. Uh, but it's going to take us a while to be able to turn that ship around. In terms of the homelessness and uh, and the, the growing homelessness that we see, uh, I'm also unapologetic about the fact that we put uh, whānau into motels uh, to be able to get through COVID-19 uh, because we needed to look after their high water at the same time. They were on our streets. We needed to do better than that. Are motels the long-term solution? Not at all. And our Minister of Housing has been really uh, sure about that and we as the Kahui Māori Caucus uh, we're wrapping around that and saying this is not the future that we want. And um I'm going to let Rawari respond to that because basically he's blaming the last government for the housing problem. What is your response to that? Well housing's been an issue for many, many years, especially for Māori. 
Um, if you take a walk through Minginui, you take a walk through Kaingaroa, and you take a walk through those rural communities, uh, and also in those, in those uh, urban areas of Rotorua, yes, there's a housing problem. But it didn't happen in the last nine years. That's been going on for a long time. Homelessness was happening during Helen Clark's time. The neoliberal reforms of the Labour Party back in the 80s has created all this, and the tail of that is still whipping us now. Let's get real about this. And if we don't put a pole in the ground, so the Māori Party policy is to ensure that we build 2,000 homes under our procurement uh, policy, we will have a, uh, from the beginning to the end process, a plan to ensure that we get the right people in, in those places to create those jobs, right, first of all, and then the end product is having people in those homes. But what we're doing is we're also building the, uh, the trade the trade uh, part of the of the country that we're, we're missing out on. Otherwise, they're going to bring people from overseas. They continue to do that right now to fill those to fill those gaps. We need to stop that to ensure that Māori are filling those particular gaps. When it comes to tourism, our flagship policy, Fano First, will deal with that. Tourism was one part of that uh, part of that question. Me, so I'm going to address that. Um, is that 25% of all the tourism contracts that come out of the government go to Māori, for Māori, by Māori. Papai, I want to get to Hannah and give her an opportunity to respond to that. We're talking about tourism there in Waiariki. We know it's been greatly affected through mm. COVID-19. So Vision New Zealand is talking uh, about self-sustainable businesses and an industry for our economy. What are some of those? Well, I think that if we got rid of 1080 in Waiariki for a little while and uh, just do the test and let's start doing hunting, possum hunting, and stop polluting our waters with 1080. We could, the wood that we have in our communities, instead of shipping it off overseas, why don't we create um, factories where we can make our own furniture, outdoor furniture, it doesn't have to be flash, high grade furniture, but outdoor furniture with the logging from, ka from ka Kaungaroa. Um, but I, I want to address the housing thing as well. You know, I think a leader doesn't look back and blame everybody else. The leader will put their head down and come up with solutions. And I get sick of, and I think a whole lot of other people do too, of hearing the blaming of this person and that person. Yeah. If we just start collaborating together, working together as we're supposed to, um, together as teams, I'm sure we could come up with some great solutions. But to blame previous governments is not the answer. It's so, about working So those forward. are some great examples there. We're talking about um, building, using our own timber. We're talking about some hunting and that kind of stuff. We're talking about procurement there. What uh, transform transformational kind of ideas have you come up in the Māori caucus? You've got seven seats. What have you done in the last three years? What to be is... able to create jobs? Yes. Uh, to create, uh, sure, absolutely. So we've invested in education, first and foremost. Uh, if we are getting people that are losing their jobs, we need to make sure that they've got places to go and that finance isn't a barrier to that. So if people want to go into uh, tertiary education, whether it's university or the trades, uh, we're focused on the trades and we've scrapped apprenticeship fees to encourage our whanau to uh, redirect their employment skills into something else where there might be demands. Uh, we know that there is a housing crisis. We know that we need builders and sparkies and uh, like people to be able to help. Do you like the idea of the procurement, the 25%, because that would just clean that all up? I would Government really conflict. like to enact that. And, uh, and in fact, our Minister of Māori <laughs> Development, <laughs> Nanaia Mahuta, has been working on this. How, how much is the Labour Party uh, proposing in terms of procurement? Look, can I tell you that that's but a great idea? Just a percentage, 25%. We haven't so got you, a number on that. And what's and the percentage? What's that? What, what percentage are we, you... We haven't got a percentage on that. But I'll tell you what we already have done is that we've already, uh, for the COVID-19 uh, shovel-ready projects, we've tagged that and said that 138 of our government agencies and departments must consider uh, where Māori opportunities, how we can better Māori outcomes in the spend. So we're already doing that. It's not strong enough, me. So, so, you want a number? So you want, so you a, want a number, yeah. You want a headline? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm not going to give you a 15, headline. I know 16. it's time for headlines. Uh, actually, we're just going to do the work because that's what we're already doing Hannah, and that's the rules the that we've Does Vision changed. New Zealand, um, you know, what do you think about procurement, taking a percentage out of the government spend? Absolutely. And what would it hurt to rebuild the economy in Wairiki, and I think the people are crying out for that sort of support, and they want leaders that would stand up and step up and right. say, yes, we're going to do it. And I think that the day of us pussyfooting around so is over. So 25%, you like 25%? Well, hey, I'm not going so to start stealing. Here, hey, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20,
Tahuti mai, I know you're watching the Hui Porti 2020 with the three leading candidates for the Waiariki. Okay, Rawiri, Ma, we talked about Māori home, uh, home ownership before. It's been falling for about 25 years. Kiwi Build promised to create opportunities but failed to fire. Well, how will the Māori Party tackle the housing? Well, we've got a housing ha policy. And, and home ownership yep. as well. We've got a housing policy coming out on, uh, on Thursday. Oh, and in that policy, you know, the problem is this, these, these governments, successive governments, uh, continue to give their rich mates a hand up, right? So we need to be taxing houses. Why, why is houses the only thing not taxed in this country? Uh, so the Māori Party is proposing that we put a, uh, a capital gains tax on, on housing at 2%, and we must do that. We must do that. And to stop... All houses. Oh, yeah. And to stop uh, international um, uh, buyers coming in and buying our homes and taking housing speculation up, because that's got to stop. We've got to release the pressure on our housing market to allow our people to, to be able to afford those. And we'll get to affordability a little bit later on. The other thing is about through our procurement process, 25% of all trades and contracts is to go to Māori organisations for Māori by Māori. Our trade scheme will allow us to have a, a, a beginning to an end process where we are part of the solution, but also we're getting the benefits at the end of it. So our, our policy on Thursday, We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll turn heads, but it's a poe in the ground, and we're not gonna, we, we've got to stop giving this uh, hand up to the rich people because you know, it's our people at the end of it that are, that are still in the gutter. So you know, put the poe in the ground and stop mugging around. Capital gains is something that the Labour Party talked about um, last time. What happened? Yeah, look, um, the last coalition government happened and, uh, and our leader made it really clear that actually while she was the leader, we wouldn't be entertaining it. So if the Māori Party want to you come into the tent with the us... And you ruled it out before the coalition. And they will come in with us... You uh, did. That you, 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 you did. You ruled out... It's going to happen under you, our leader. But you ruled out capital gains tax before the coalition, so it's not the coalition. No, under the leadership of Jacinda Ardern. You uh, she was out. the one that called it out. Uh, Mihi, that's what they're doing. I wish we had rich mates. <laughs> You've got rich mates. <laughs> it was, it really was before do. the election. You, What's you that? ruled it out before the election, didn't you? Uh, gains. Absolutely, it's something that we've tried um, many times before. So uh, if you ask me personally, I still think that it's actually uh, it's a really good idea that has merit. Uh, but if uh, this party over here wants to be part of the next government and they keep saying that they want to, uh, then actually it's just a pipe dream to be able to say stuff like that. Because under the leadership of our Prime Minister, she's already ruled it out. So, so no go? No go. In, so so you can't be, promise that in the future? a continuous housing problem. So, yeah, so, no, so no go ever? So it's ruled Under out? Under the leadership of Jacinda Ardern, she ruled it out herself. So what so about as a Māori caucus? Thing. What about as a Māori caucus where you've got such a strong Māori caucus? You know, what do you guys get there to do? There are other things that we can do. Um, there, are, there are many other like, things that we can do. What, what like be, like what build houses, equal? like partner with Māori communities like we're already doing uh, to build Papa Kainga, like we did with the Rangi Nui 12 I'm going to come to, to you in a Māori are five times more likely than Pākehā to be homeless. You have a policy that would end the sale of, to, to foreigners, just like the Māori Party. How do you hope to redistribute the wealth between New Zealanders so Māori have a fair chance in home ownership? Well I think the first thing we could do is give back Māori land that's in government hands because Māori are the, the kaitiaki and why, is, you know, around Marais there must be land that could be built on. The other thing is there's no reason why we couldn't give people that to get a deposit together interest-free loans for first home owners. That would help families get into homes. And you know, I've been in Ford Block too and there's a few houses there that are in disrepair that could have families in them today. But when we, we've got to be more proactive and it's not just about a political party here. This is about people. The only reason I'm standing is for people. I don't really care about the policies of everything. It's about the people and making sure their voices are heard, that their, their children, their mokopuna are in homes, they can sleep at night in warm beds and not next to other people in motels. In Rotorua, I'm sure we could have built a few more houses. There's lots of land there. And the other thing is encourage our Māori and the councils drop all their red tape and let them build other houses on their property because if they've got quarter acre sections they could build three or four little units that their whānau could be living in. Ka pai I'm going to come back to you because you did blame the last government in terms of the housing crisis. Uh, when you came into power, we, I took a quick look at the Rotorua waiting list and it showed that in 2017 124 people were waiting for housing. Now in 2020 it's 464. Why? 
Yeah, look, we've actually just come out of a pandemic uh, as well. So that's actually gone and increased the numbers understandably. Uh, it was the only option that we had to be able to look after the hauora of all of those people in Rotorua that needed some housing solutions. Uh, so that's what we've gone and done. But make no mistake, Mihi, motels are not the future. That is not what we want our people to do. And for that reason, we haven't been buying motels like uh, like actually the last government did. Well, that's a good question. Does the, Do you take any responsibility for the last government? No, I don't. There? Because no, I wasn't the there. But, but the because Maori I wasn't there. So, no, no, so, I won't accept so, that. But I, what I will but say, why not? Because but what I will say is that I met with Tiny Maori Dean party. last week. I met with Tiny Dean last week, who is doing an awesome job with the homeless. Um, he is the one. He is the one that has been driving the homeless off the streets and into a solution. He's been doing uh, this government's job. Yes, He's been doing the Rawai, council's job. How, also how, doing the iwi's voters, job to ensure can, that homeless are not sleeping on the on the on the streets. Pipe. How do how do voters take you seriously if you won't take responsibility for your party of the of No, because I'm going to take responsibility for the ask, future. We asked the Labour to take responsibility. What for is he going to take responsibility for the nationalisation of petroleum? Is he going to take responsibility for the neoliberal reforms of the 80s? Is he going to take responsibility for the foreshore and seabed, all the two hoy raids, all the um, warrantless searches on our marae that was this past this year? So no, I will not take responsibility for that. But I will take responsibility for heading forward for my people and coming up with solutions that are enduring for our tamariki boko when they're heading into the future. Yes, Hannah, and what's your response to that? You know, the whole thing is here. It's about us really caring about people. And I see that. I talk to business people in Rotorua, and I know Tiny too. I, I'm, I'm proud to be part of a group of people that are actually building houses, right. buying houses, doing up those houses for those exact people. And that's something for us to celebrate. Now, if we do the wraparound and we care for them and we encourage those people, so, you know, taxing people all the time when they're doing good, I think we've got to really look deep and see what are we, are we going to penalise people for doing good or we're going to encourage them and up them along, especially when it's Māori families. We've got so many Māori families that want to make a difference right throughout Waiariki, and I'd like to see them be able to do that. Kapai, more explosive than a geyser. Kia utunu maira. We'll be back with more after the break. Araki mai anō. Well, as we know, the election was supposed to be held last weekend, but was postponed due to COVID-19. Nō reira, me hoki atu tātou ki Waiariki mō tētehi uru paunamu nō te rohe. Kia ora, ko mapahi raharuhi a hau, ko Ngāti Pikiao me Ngāti Hinekura, me Ngāti Kia Ngāti Tuara aku iwi, tēnā koutou. As a result of our kaimatua and community members being fearful around having testing for COVID, one of the responses we did as Te Arawa Whānau Ora was to create marae COVID testing pop-up sites. We did this within partnership and support from Te Puna Ora o Mātātua. That was a call to action from our kaimatua and community. What I'd like to know from our politicians is, how would you 
Make sure that there are more Māori or the right Māori around the decision-making table to give confidence to our Māori communities that there is a strong COVID response. Kei koe rauri. Well, nobody was part of a better COVID response than Tafano Abuni. So we blocked borders. We ensured that we worked with Whānau Water organisations to ensure that all those sanitary packs were delivered to our people. Uh, we also made sure that all the pakeke were looked after. But in terms of that question, how are you going to get Māori decision-making around the COVID stuff? You need to be talking to Māori. 80% in the last... Um, uh, in, a, in a survey done by Te Punoro Mātātou, and mentioned in this particular um, uh, question, Te Punoro Mātātou ran a survey. 71% of the total that Fano got came from Māori, iwi, hapu organisations. They didn't come from the government. 1.7% came from um, came from Peni Henare's ministry, um, from civil defence, and uh, you know, and 6% came from churches. That came straight out of that survey. 1,600 people were surveyed through the whole of Matatua. You know, that tells me that the communities know how to look after themselves. This is how you're going to get Maori uh, participation in this space: is that Maori must be engaged and Maori must be leading its own oranga and not waiting for any, any government decision, not waiting for any alert levels. We know how to look after ourselves, uh, and we need to just believe in ourselves to be able to do that. That's how we're going to do it. Tamati, you'd disagree with those numbers, wouldn't you? Wasn't there 50 million or something given, or 37 million or something given to Māori response? Yeah, yeah, there was. And actually, I don't know where he's getting his numbers from, but I think that Paul Goldsmith, from the, Nation, Paul Goldsmith from the National Party might be helping them out with their numbers. Um, let's be clear. The question was about how we're ensuring that Māori are represented at governance levels, and that's what we've gone and prioritised uh, as the Māori caucus within the Labour Party. Uh, 43 uh, of, the, of the appointments to DHBs in the last round, uh, we've got Māori sitting in those governance positions. We've got four DHB chairs, uh, of which in the Lakes DHB, we've got one of those as well. Um, Jim Mather is proudly sitting in that chair role. Uh, we need to keep up that work as well and make sure that we're doing as much as we can. But um, when it comes to uh, the whole order of our whānau, especially what during... when it comes to the leadership? You know, we have Ashley Bloomfield out there. Why don't we have, for example, Dr Rhys Jones? Y Valid question, um, but actually, at the time, uh, we needed as few voices as possible uh, just getting the messages out to Aotearoa. And actually, with the Prime Minister there, uh, with Dr Ashley Bloomfield there, uh, actually, I think that Aotearoa had a bit of confidence that we were being managed in the right way. We didn't hear a Māori voice. Though, Hannah, Hannah, you're proposing to keep borders closed, uh, including banning all my immigrants and refugees for 24 months. Absolutely. Um, you want to strengthen the borders by purchasing Navy destroyers and fighter jets. How will these military craft be used? Well, it's not so much about that for now. It's about protecting what we've got. And right from April, I said, close the borders. Tai ho, don't let anybody else in. And how come immigrants were still coming in? And I know for a fact we that they were. In. So, so um, New Zealanders coming New Ze home? Not all New Zealanders coming home because a whole lot of Asians get off a plane and they give the they same address. Asians 20 or No, these are people that don't speak New so, Ze so, English. So they're New Zealand no, they're. citizens, yeah. right? They're New Zealand well, citizens. No, some of them were not. So, so, but, but, and what about the Americans that were the coming in and buying but, land. But by closing the borders, wouldn't you then effectively be make, making Māori refugees and other no, countries? No, yes. Bring our people home, yes, absolutely, but don't bring foreigners in. And reality is, a lot of the COVID, we wouldn't have had it still here in New Zealand if we had to close the borders right back then and said to everybody, isolate where you are, stay safe, help us be safe, and let's just get rid of this. Should New Zealanders be allowed to come home? Yes, but there should be belts and braces on that. So they should be tested before they leave. Yes. They should be tested when they get here. Yes. The problem is the testing was too weak and now you've got another yes. outbreak. That's just, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Exactly. And now we've got, now we've got uh, Pagia is telling us again about the outbreaks on TV. Exactly. There was no Māori voice in those, in those exactly. particular reports. Why wasn't there? Was, there? There, was, there was the deaf language, the other official language of this country, yep. but there was no Māori language. Okay, That's come, something that, um, that we need to be looking at. I'll come back to you, because I want to ask you a question. At a, at a protest in July, you said that people of faith in Māori were being forced into immunisation. Do you support the National Immunisation Programme? I support people making a choice for themselves, for their children, for themselves. I do not want anybody to feel that they have to take something into their body that is foreign if they don't want to. And when people are forced to or told that you're not going to go to but work, you're not going to be able to go to school, which can be part of it, 
then their children can't go to school unless they're immunised. And that, we know, is factual. And I so, want to say, so, so hang on a moment, so, I want to say, why wasn't there a Māori voice? Every day at one o'clock, all we saw was the Prime Minister, and, you know, good on them, they were doing a good job, but why, didn't, why wasn't there a portion for Māori people to stand up and say to everybody, uh, it's all right, you know, Take the pie, people will be fine. Why wasn't there? There was no. They carry on. Ma they ministers, carry on indoctrinating us. Māori ministers, brown is Māori down, ministers, and we're, we're not the brown Māori anymore. ministers were using their platforms and Māori television had funding to broadcast. Um, just for a few. I just want to know if a COVID nineteen vaccine came in, would you be using it? No, I would not. And what do we do about that issue if New Zealanders choose not to when we? Uh, we're in needing, you know, a, a herd immunity. Yep. Look, this is sorry, something sorry, that we... Sorry, a, a percentage of people to have immunisation. Yep, and we have to have that conversation as a country about whether or not, uh, how far down that track we go. Because um, what Hannah's saying isn't actually unpopular. There are people out there who say it's my body. I decide what gets put into my body and you're not going to tell me. So it's a, it's a big, bold conversation that we need to have. Rauri? We need to find a vaccine. Uh, before we let anybody or any international students, this is what the, this is what the Labour Party is proposing. Any international students coming into New Zealand, there needs to be a vaccine before that happens. Exactly. So um, before the immunisation, let's find a vaccine. Let's make sure we can heal this uh, this particular copa so isn't we can it, move forward. Isn't it national that wants to bring in the um, uh, the international students? Yeah, but the, these the thing is. They will bring them in because it's all about the economy of this country. And tonight they want to bring in luxury tourism, uh, yeah. luxury immunisation quarantine as well. No. Something that Absolutely any of you not. would support? Cop. Hannah? No. OK, kapai. Well, it's getting hotter than a Polynesian pool. So stay with us. We'll be back in two ticks. Hey, te mātake take koutou i te tau patu patu mō Waiariki and it's getting fun in here. Time to take a look now at our second question from the electorate. Kia ora, my name is Eni Hapati Waka and I come from Rotorua or Fordlands. I just want to reiterate to the politicians about suicide awareness. In our own community, I'd say we've had up to, say, 10 just from the beginning of the year and others from last year. The ages range from you know, 17 up to 30, but we've been getting some younger ones lately. I actually relate to this because my daughter-in-law, she committed suicide and left us with four grandchildren. My question to you politicians is, what are you gonna do to stop this high rate of suicide in New Zealand? Because it's heartbreaking and it's hard on our families. Hannah. You know, if only we had a quick solution, but we don't. But it is, it is about us actually having the courage to talk about it, to go into the communities, to after those families that have lost and actually empower them, give them the strength 
to actually talk to other whānau and not be afraid to go and um, even talk to the young people who have lost friends. Uh, we do a wraparound service with Man Up and Legacy and of course we've been able to save people from doing that who have contacted our 0800 number and called out for help. And I think as long as they know that there is somebody that's not going to judge them, that's going to care for them and look after them, that's what makes a big difference. The thing is, during Christmas and places like that, times like that, the social service departments all close down. We need to make sure that we have 24-7 at all times for all people, regardless whether it's a public holiday or not, just to make sure that there is somebody for them at all times. Tamati, $1.9 billion was put into mental health. Um, you know, suicide rates nationally have dropped, including... Uh, Rotorua Lakes, but not so much in the Bay of Plenty. Action Stations today is reporting that actually, if you break that down into ethnicity, Māori youth suicide has increased by 94%. So what's not working? We need to make sure that it's not the government that's expected to come up with all the answers to this one. Um, as Hannah said, and I don't agree with much that Hannah says, uh, but actually I will agree with this one. Uh, we need to make sure that we're partnering with our local communities. There are Māori organisations mm. that are available at the touch of a button that work in this really hard and heavy space, and especially for those whānau uh, that have lost somebody. They need somebody at the drop of a hat. Uh, they need people to manaki them at that really rough time. One thing that we have done uh, is we've set up a, a national strategy. So we set up New Zealand's first uh, uh, suicide prevention office. Uh, part of that was a puti that was put aside specifically for Māori suicide or whakamomori um, to be able to uh, afia whānau around the country uh, that are working in that how space. Much, how much is in that puti? Uh, I'll come back to you on that one, Mihi. And how much are you going to give to an organisation like us that actually do the work for the last six years? You know what, you can actually give. It's actually Rawari's turn, but I do okay. want to ask you a question about Man Up because yeah. I wonder, is that a vision New Zealand policy or is that... No, it's message? just about people helping each other. Isn't it about us helping no, each no, no, other? No, no, I just wanted to clear yeah. that up. Yeah. So Rawari, whānau ora, is that... Is that the answer to suicide? And well, there's a, whole, there's a whole lot of things, Mihi, first of all. So $1.9 million going into the mental health sector. Billion. N oh, sorry, $1.9 billion going into the mental health sector. None, you know, we've got to start channeling that into Māori organisations with Māori solutions, we are. right? So the mental health system at the moment is run by westernised ideology and westernised models. That's a fact. You know why? Because I'm married to a clinical psychologist. What we need is more investment into Māori um, the, uh, Māori models of care and Māori models of oranga, and they need to be resourced properly. We need to reconnect our people because years and years of, of colonisation has done this. Years and years of abuse by two major parties. We're not talking about over the ni last nine years. We're talking about over 100 years of abuse of our people. If you've got to go, here we go. And we've got skyrocketing rock suicide um, no, uh, statistics but, but about our people. But it's not good enough. It's not good enough. We've got to put a pole in the ground. We've got to put a pole in the ground. It's not coming sure down that with Maori youth and that's where our biggest issue is and so and we've you know, got and problems perhaps he's and right. we need to make and, sure and that we, we can't brush it off and say it's coming down. Is, is he with right the because these guys actually as much as he's Maori standing here suicide, talking about it Maori they didn't put the money in. Suicide, Maori Think suicide about the has suicide. been given 20 million dollars of a 1.9 billion dollar budget is that enough? Hey, it's a start. And actually, under that it's government, not it's fine for him it to needs stand to go there to and, and shout with about Māori what, he, what should be done. But actually, not they had nine years used by psychologists, and we didn't do anything. Hannah, hey, 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 we've had this hey, discussion. Hey, hey, you two, <laughs> back it up. The reality is there are organisations, but That's people right. don't want yes. to use them because they're discriminated against. That's right. Māori, stop criticising each other. Let's after each other. Let's let's collaborate together and make the best deals for our people, not for a party, for people. I'm not in this for um, political gain. That's I'm right. in here for the people, and that's the only reason I've decided to do it. I could be doing anything else, but my mukapuna and my great mukapuna mean more to me than anything, so I'm prepared to commit myself to be being um, a person that will stand up and speak, regardless of the voices around me, I am not going to be indoctrinated by a whole lot of rubbish, just because their leader, and thankfully, I am the leader of Vision New Zealand, so what I say goes. Kafe, I'm going to change the subject. <laughs> Who owns the water? Oh, Māori own the water. There's no doubt about it. We are the true kaitiaki of the water, and we own the water. There's no doubt about it. Now, if you are Māori, that would be your position. Tamati, who owns the water? Māori have special rights and interests and we've no, already got no. water bodies around the country which are uh, owned by our iwi. So we need to make Cousin, sure that... Because once upon a time you did say that Māori owned the water, didn't you, in 2016 when you were talking about the Ōtākere Spring? That Māori owned the water. Yeah. Be I brave and say it, brother. 
that Māori own, own the water. water. Do you believe it? I, I do believe that Māori own the water, that they Thank have you. special rights and interests. But I also believe that there's a conversation there that's uh, no, Aotearoa whānui. No, 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 we need a conversation. So, so, and Hannah, what would you do with the Ōtākiri Springs? Uh, hey. Stop selling our water. Right. It's our water. Let's stop poisoning our water. Pesticides and all those things. We need to be sustainable, yep. and water is, uh, is like gold. But and we've got to look after that it. One billion litres has been shipped out of Otakiri yep. to international stop owners it. and international um, stop it. owners of this, that particular this, water. Watch. This, but you no, but, like this but you've news. been in government now for three years, yep. and, and, and Ngati yep. Awa Put the is actually in the courts at the, at the moment. So... Why not a moratorium to protect that way in the meantime while we sort it out? Because actually what that does is it benefits those people that are already inside the tent. The and we need to make sure, because actually there have the been conversations amongst the Māori uh, no who actually want to get into that space. Uh, so actually there's a bit of a conflict there as well. But if you had a moratorium, then everything would just stop until you could sort it out. Is it a good idea? A moratorium. It's something that we could discuss. And if we're lucky enough to be the government on the other side of October the 17th, that'll be one of if the If you were the leader, would about. you stop it? If you were the leader? Like, you, you're... Who's running you know. the show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Hannah, Hannah, that's my job. <laughs> oh, sorry. Would you support a moratorium in the meantime? Yeah, absolutely. Kapa. But at the end of the day, Māori owned the water. Let's make no doubt about that. So why right? didn't you do anything okay. about it? Well, you've had three years, now you've done nothing years. about it either. It's getting it's louder. Years. You've had 100 years. Hey, wait for my line. Years. Wait for my line. It's getting louder than up and doing Kapahaka <laughs> living. We're on the home straight now. I think that's the Kawero straight. So stay with us. Ka auraki te hui akwane. The Māori Party wants compulsory history and real in schools. What do we do about hahi, Māori, religion? Oh, the, the, it's all got to be part of it. So we've got to have a physical, we've got to have a spiritual, and we've got to have a cultural component to all of those particular things. Um, you know, when 20% of Māori can speak Māori, which make up 3% of this country, we've got to be doing more. We've got to be doing more. Making it compulsory puts a pole in the ground to ensure that te reo Māori is a living language here in this country. We can't be piddling around with these little silly little policies uh, driven by Crown agencies. This is, has to be driven by Aotearoa Whanuini. Um, so, you know, returning the name to Aotearoa is putting the Poe in the ground. Returning all the names, place names and towns in this, in this country is putting a Poe in the ground. Making Māori a core subject and Māori history in schools up to year 10 is putting a Poe in the ground. We must put a Poe in the ground. Vision New Zealand uh, will ban the construction of new mosques, temples and other foreign buildings of worship. Does this include uh, the American Pentecostal churches or the Church of England? I just think we need to get back to our faith and build our faith. We've got all these other faiths coming in and we've got it enough now. And yes, I said that, <laughs> but reality oh. is Hindu is the, 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 the highest religion now in New Zealand above Christianity or the Catholic What's the Church. What's with that? 
Well, I think that our people, and then our government takes Bible out of schools, discourages that. They take the name of Jesus out of Parliament. So it's like they want to dumb down Christianity. Our country was built on the backbone of prayer and missionaries coming. A lot of Māori have a, have a very strong faith. For those people that don't, no one's pushing it on them, but why is Christianity being pulled back and other religions pushed forward? Our forefathers fought and for God, but aren't for you, king aren't you, and for aren't country. You, don't you want to also pull it back because you're trying to ban mosques and the building of other people's religions? I'm going to come to town. Well, build some houses. Build some to, houses on that land. You know what? To, build houses. To, 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 to just give you a response to that question there because the, um, the current government is making uh, history and schools a core subject. Yeah. Is it happening fast enough? And how are you going to teach teachers to teach these subjects? To teach New Zealand history in schools? Uh, well, yeah. First of all, can I say that as a history major from university, uh, there's nothing that pleases me more uh, than the fact that our, our, my son, uh, Tutanekai, will actually grow up learning about the history of his environment, and all of his other students uh, around him will also do the same. Uh, but actually, it's going to take a bit of time to work out, uh, with our whānau on the ground, exactly what history is going to look like, because for every area, it's different. And we need to make sure that we're appreciating uh, the battle and the, the blood that was shed and the laws that made us uh, marginalised back in the days. It's going to take some time. Kapai, I'm going to go to the referendums now because um, people want to know cannabis. If you can tell me if you're voting for it, if you're not, and why. So would you tell me cannabis? Sure. Um, yes, I'm voting for the cannabis referendum. Uh, I think that too much police resource is wasted uh, in that space. Uh, I think that uh, the settings around making sure that we're taking care of the concerns of our whānau uh, are, are in the Act. And I also think that we need to better streamline access for those people uh, that need access to it as Rungawa. Kapai, Hannah? Absolutely not. And um, I think that there are enough people that grow it recreationally now. What's going to happen to them? So I've been talking to gang members and I'm saying, telling them they to won't vote go to jail. No. But you know what? Are they going to drive criminal? machinery under the influence of drugs? Because if you're, you're pulled up tonight and you've had a couple of joints, you're going to be charged for that. So are they going to be able to go out at smoko time, have a few joints and then get on machinery? Who's going to take responsibility for you that? So is no, ACC, so no, no, right. so ACC no. going to pay for that? Is the government prepared to pay for all those injuries Good and be points. sued? Rabbi. I am voting yes for the decriminalisation of cannabis because I don't think there has been enough conversation with Māori around what um, um, uh, legalisation looks like. We don't want to be locked out like the kiwi fruit industry where there are licences that are absolutely unattainable by our people and then you've got investors coming in on Māori land because this is where you're going to grow it, on Māori land having these licences unattainable by our people, uh, monopolising our funeral for the next 10 to 15 years and locking our people out of the industry. So, but also to agree that, yes, it takes the stigma off our people for, uh, in terms of the decriminalisation. $700-odd million dollars a year staying, spent on staying, incarcerating our people because sta of drugs. Staying with you, just a yes or no on euthanasia? Euthanasia? Yes. Mā wai rā te hara mai tiki i tōmoko, e kore e te tangata, me wai hoake mā hene nui te pō, mā hene nui te pō. The yes. privilege and the honour is not bestowed on any man to take anybody to death, but by hene nui te pō. So that's an absolute no from me. Hannah. Absolute no. Life is life and afi them until their last breath. Palmerty. Yes, and there's actually a big segment of New Zealand who are supportive of this, and they range in ages, but actually, if you are terminally ill, you've been given six months to live, and you've been ticked off by a medical professional, you're of sound mind and body, you choose to want to do it, uh, then actually I believe that you should, because not everybody will choose to do it. Tēnā koutou, mō ērā whakaaro. Our last segment is a politician that you admire, past or present, perhaps, starting with you, Rawari. Oh, um, you know, the best politicians actually are on our marae and our hapu and our iwi. So I think the best politicians I've grown up around have been my aunties and uncles and my nannies and my papas. They have been the best politicians. They have groomed uh, this cowboy standing here today. Um, he has not been groomed by any politician in this particular at atmosphere, but sitting in those marae hui, sitting in those land hui, sitting in iwi decision-making areas, that's where the politicians are. And um, Wellington ain't got nothing on my aunties and uncles at home at a hapu hui, I'll tell you that now. Hannah. I don't admire any politician because they're supposed to be public servants, to be honest, but I do love um, the works of um, Dr Martin Luther King. And he 
look, look what happened to him, assassinated for all the good that he was doing, and now everyone treats him as a hero. Why could you not have treated him as a hero while he lived? And thank goodness, his beautiful daughter, Bernice, is carrying on the legacy of her father. Uh, she never became a Māori MP, but I believe she was robbed of that particular title. Um, but she is somebody that stands up in the hui uh, back home time and time again and is a fighter for Māori rights. And that's Annette Sykes. Uh, I believe that she's somebody that I look up to uh, every day, somebody that gets out there, is unafraid to be arrested, is unafraid to say the wrong thing, uh, and stands up for what she believes in. She's somebody that I admire hugely. All amazing people. Tēnā koutou katoa. Kāri i ārikarika kumihi ki ngā manua ka, uh, kairoki o uh, Waiariki Hena, Tāmati Rauri. Thank you for being with us this evening. Tēnā koutou. Yeah, now make sure you log on tomorrow night at 8 for our Ikaro Rāwhiti debate. It's sure to be hearty. And remember, folks, if you're not enrolled to vote, you still have time, and you can do that at vote.nz. Ko hiki nga te hui, no hōra mai rā. with support from New Zealand On Air.